a basic, it's like a con artist. You get a little bit of truth and you, you know, you do that. So, um, but yeah, they, uh, I, I kind of practice like I did in the martial arts and that is that I practice my Mawai, which is the distance I can actually hit a person and they can't hit me. The same thing here, I try to use that same thing for knowing when I'm at the right distance where I can get them and they can't get me. Some people say, why do you use such a short hook? Well, if I use too long of a hook to pen, if I come in from the top, when you go down to pick them up, you let pressure off the hook. So you, you have to slide your hand down and get to the animal. And when you do that, the pressure comes off. So then you end up having the animal get away from you while your hand's in a really bad position. Actually, the worst place is the release. Because when you're releasing your split second, your hand is right next to their mouth. And there's just that little bit of room for... Uh, I know, because I take kids out on hikes and, you know, I'll pull up with the gardener. And mm -hmm. yeah, I get bit, you know, usually I know how quick you can handle it. Yeah. So, they, you know, they, that's one of the things that is, a, is an issue with the, when you're doing the extractions and stuff. This one's getting more. Do you just do this every couple of weeks to come here and do this? Are you a part of the this executive organization, or are they? I I founded this one. Oh, you did. Yeah. So yeah. You're the main guy. Yeah. I start I I started extracting 48 years ago. I did it even when I was a cop and a paramedic, and um, I got run over by a stolen car when I was 26. I got forced into taking a retirement. I got 20 percent of my pension. And I decided that I wanted to continue doing this, so I moved down here, and a gentleman had a uh, building up, up next to where the Mexican restaurant is now, and he let me stay there for a year and do a little exhibit to see if it would work. I slept on a concrete floor in the back, and I took the same, took the same amount of pain I take now, which is nothing. And I look, still live off of that 20% of my pension. I just, I, I couldn't, I just couldn't just give up, you know, overall it's, it, for me I had to be doing something, but this is something that I, I don't like to see people suffer, and even when I was a cop, I was, it was always called the hippie cop, because I always tried to help people, the kid that almost killed me actually lived in my basement for a while, and he was one of the martial arts I was trying to get through to him. But he was on PCP when he ran me over. He didn't know who I was. You know, but it has the same effect. I'm dead, and, <laughs> you know, I'm not dead. But they had to, they had to use a uh, defibrillator on me. How they extracted down was because the old mentality was you bring the snake in, you milk it until it dies, which is like six months. And I thought that was inhumane. And for, from a scientific standpoint, it really doesn't make sense because you can't replicate what you just did. So I started breeding them. I bred King Cobras starting when I was 17. And I actually graduated high school when I was 17 and started extracting venom when I was 17. The other problem we have here is they don't do prescribed burns. So, and that, yeah, I, you know, people don't realize how important yeah, that is. Money. Yeah, money too. Yeah, our state is not, they don't spend a whole lot on their state farms. They just, Thank you. 
Some of my favorites. The dark ones are gorgeous. You guys see this? You saw the other copperhead there from around here. This one is. God, this one's really old. I can't remember now how old it is. Over 30 some years old. But it was caught down behind the. That's, you know, it was caught down behind the um, uh, Miguel's. And it's been father to a, a bunch of snakes. Ah, uh, he just put the side down. No, he didn't. He just did that. Now, how do you know it's not going to monkey die? Well, I don't. And I keep it. There's. It's. Uh, this is. There's a bunch of pollute. It had lines. It had lines? It it's, had like white lines every year. There are a ton. So did you guys, um, how did how did you end up down here? Um, well, um, first we came down near Charlotte because um, he had, he has his, uh, first grandbaby and those oh, family congratulations. get together. We stayed at a wonderful campground over there. Okay. And then we stayed at Fisca National Forest for four nights. Oh. And then we're on our way back home to my birthday, so we decided to oh. stop here and stay at the campground here. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, then I don't know if they told you the state park's on fire. What? The state park up here is on fire. Oh. Yeah. This is our weekend that we do a herpetology weekend with fish and wildlife and the, the forestry and the state park. And we don't know if we're going to, we're having it, but it's like being all moved around because the place where it was supposed to be at is closed because the fire is closed. Classic, I'm rattling, I'm going to you know strike and all that other stuff that people put out there. Oh, I forgot to tell you, you don't need a video of all these guys. We already put a video up of these guys. You're welcome, thanks. 
Yeah, that's nice to hear. <laughs> uh, yeah, compared to what I've been hearing on the internet. Lately, I've been called all kinds of names and wished death on me and everything. People think that that rattle that's now up to almost 9 million views think that the, it's fake because it's not rattling. I showed it because it's not rattling and it's a long rattle. And just to show people that they don't always rattle. I appreciate that. I've had people stand outside in the tropics room and talk about how they hope I got dead. Absolutely not. Yeah. Well, I I, I always tell myself because I when I was younger I also ran had reptile exhibit to when I to fairs and stuff. And then it was back when they had sh the, the old shows. And a guy who had no legs and arms was called himself the Snake Man. I felt became friends with him because I actually felt bad for him because everybody was making fun of me. He said, you know what? He says, I couldn't make, I couldn't get a job. He said, I'm making money doing this. He said, all I do is get to read. And he had a trailer full of books. He was a genius. He could have been a, uh, he could have been a uh, um, professor, but he, he told me, he said, this is, you know, my family abandoned me and this is what I do. And he goes, what I think about when people are saying something like that is I'm going to, I'm going to make money off of them while I'm reading my books. So I always say to myself, I'm going to disappoint them every time and try not to get bit. Yeah. Um, I, I average about 600 to 1,000 extractions a week when I'm healthy. I'm just starting to get back. No. That's okay. It's okay. You're okay. I'm not, I'm not upset. I just don't. You know, struggle the snake. So I'm not totally back in health. I had uh, knee infection what, or knee replacement infection all last year. Almost yeah. almost ended up losing my leg. So I was on pick line twice. I was in the hospital twice being septic. And the last pick line, I had put 4,000 milligrams of mycomycin in me 24/7. So it was it was worth. Rough. I'm a nurse too, so I know. Oh, you know, yeah. I drank lots of water. My my CRP was 450. Yeah. Now, where did you have your knee replacement? Dr. Duncan. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's done my hips and my knees, and I had multiple knee because of kickboxing and stuff. Um, I had multiple knee surgeries. And he did. He was just trying to lick, get me through until they came up with a better prosthetic. But he replaced both my hips, and right one was replaced right before the pandemic, and then it only la the hip only lasted a year. He's writing a paper on it. I damaged a titanium hip. Wow! Because I was an orthopedic nurse, so I know. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Did you work on me? <laughs> I, I don't think so. I know Dr. Duncan, but I didn't work with him. That's a okay. northern. That's a northern. Yeah. yeah. Everything else is. Really cool. uh, the one on the very bottom as well. Okay, but this is a southern. Yeah. Is there one other side? Well, this yeah. One right one. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We try not to get them this fat. <laughs> but yeah, Dr. Dr. Duncan wrote a paper. It, it basically, I, they didn't expect a 60 year old man to be doing the splits and kicking a 200 pound bag. And I, I, I literally, the prosthetic just took a chunk out of it. I got metal poisoning. 
So my last, my last um, replacement of the knee was six months ago, and then um, I.